The Pico 8 Code Editor has many hotkeys and shortcuts that you should learn to use to help speed up your code writing and editing. Let's check them out. Let's load up the Jelpy demo again, just so we have multiple tabs of code to move around in. We already saved a Jelpy test file in our nerdy folder that we can edit and break as much as we want without affecting the original Jelpy demo. So let's load that. Load, nerdy, Jelpy, and enter. Loaded. And let's see the code. All the shortcuts in this video are specific to the code editor and each editor has its own shortcuts to learn. We are just gonna fly through these code editor shortcuts, but we'll give you an opportunity to pause the video now and then for you to test them out. And we encourage you to practice these so you remember them when we start coding. Here we go. First, we have the standard shortcuts in any text editor. Control X to cut, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, Control Z to undo, and control Y to redo. Another pretty standard shortcut is when you want to search and find certain text. Press control F to bring up this search bar, type in whatever you are looking for, and press enter to jump to the next closest match in this code tab. To find the next match, just press control and G. Why G? Because it's next to F. So you can remember that by thinking find is F, and find next is the next key on the keyboard, G. This cycles through the current tab only, and you can see at the bottom with our line count that we are repeating through the same tab. If we change tabs, then we'll have to perform the search again with Control F. Next, we have some shortcuts that will help us move the cursor around quickly without picking up our hand to move the mouse every time. They are arrow keys to move the cursor in whatever direction you press, control W to jump to the start of a line, and control E to jump to the end of the line. If your keyboard has home and end keys, those also do the same thing. Personally, I use home and end a lot since they are just over the arrow keys. Also, if you press control home, then you jump to the beginning of the entire code tab, and control end jumps to the very end of the current code tab. This also works if you hold control and press the up or down arrow keys. One that you should definitely learn to help you browse code quickly is holding Alt and press up or down. This jumps to the next or last function, and it's a lot easier than scrolling. Of course, you can scroll vertically using the mouse wheel, but you can also scroll horizontally if you hold Control while moving the mouse wheel. This helps you quickly check out any lines of code that goes off the right side of the screen. Here's a nice long line of code at line 308. To move the cursor quickly across long lines of code, you can press Control with the left or right arrow keys to jump by each word or number or symbol. Just be careful not to press up or down while holding Control, or whoops, you jump far away and lose your place in the code. But if you remember the line number you were on, then you can use Control and L to search by line number. Type 308, press enter, and it will jump to that line in the current tab. To switch code tabs easily, you can press Control and surprise, surprise, the tab key to move to the next code tab, or Control Shift and Tab to move backwards. Now there are several ways to select and highlight text, which is useful because some shortcuts depend on if text is selected or not. The standard way is of course with the mouse. Click and drag to select specific text, even across multiple lines. 
Double click to select the group of text at that point. Triple click to select the entire line of code. A standard way to select all of the text is Control A. And that does work here too, but only in the current code tab. You can deselect by moving the cursor with the arrow keys. And then select what you want by moving the cursor to the start of what you want to select. And then by holding Shift and continue moving the arrow keys around, you can select from the original cursor position to the new cursor position. Remember how we can jump the cursor to the top or bottom of the tab? We can use those same shortcuts and by adding the shift key, we can select all the text while we jump. So control shift up or control shift home will select from your cursor to the top of the code tab. And control shift down or control shift end will select everything between your cursor and the bottom of the tab. I'll often use this when I'm reorganizing my code and I want to cut a lot of code to move it to a different tab. Speaking of copying and moving text around, we have shortcuts for that too. One of my favorites is Control D, which duplicates a line of code. Instead of selecting an entire line, then copy, then paste, the cursor just needs to be on the line you want to duplicate. And a single press of Control D does all of that in one go. Unfortunately, this does not work on multiple lines. It will just duplicate the one line where the cursor is. And that's hard to tell when code is selected. But it would be here, because that's the last place I moved the cursor to. So just this line is duplicated, and the rest of the selection is moved down. We can also move a single line of code up or down by pressing Ctrl and the numbers 1 or 2. Again, much easier than cutting and pasting, but for moving multiple lines, cut and paste is still your friend. All right, next up, do you remember comments? These lines with double dashes. I described comments as being really useful, because they are ignored when your code is run. We usually use them to help describe what the code is doing or make notes for ourselves or others. But another common use is to quickly remove a line of code from the game without actually deleting it. This is called commenting out code. And there's a shortcut for that. Control B will either comment out the current line if it's not a comment, or uncomment the line if it's already a comment. This even works for multiple lines of code. But there's one thing about it that might not work as you would expect. Let's say I have multiple lines that are comments, like this. But if there are any lines in the selection that are not commented out, and this includes an empty line, then after selecting it and pressing Ctrl B, it will try to comment out the comments. And pressing it again will only uncomment those new double dashes. So it might make you think it's not working properly. But let's say I want to comment out this whole function here. And if there are already comments inside of the function as a note, then I can use this shortcut, test the game out without the function, come back and uncomment it all to bring the function back into the game, and the comments within the function are still comments. So that's perfect, that's what we want it to do. Okay, next, if you ever want a quick, helpful description of special text that appears as different colors, you can click on the word to put the text cursor there, and then press Ctrl and U. This will bring us to the command line and display a description of what this keyword does in code. It will often give us an example that we can learn from too. Now, if you already know how to code, but in a different language, then this is a great way to learn Pico 8 Lua. It's basically a built-in glossary of Pico8 coding terms. Now, if you're just starting out, then I don't suggest using this to try to learn from scratch. They are written in a way that assume you already know the basics of coding. So trying to read these descriptions without that knowledge can lead to a lot of confusion and headaches, and it can make you think that it's harder than it really is. 
So don't worry, if this looks just as confusing as code itself inside the game, I'm here to introduce and explain all these terms and symbols in a much more detailed and easy to learn way. After you learn them with our clear description, then these short descriptions will make more sense, and they'll be very helpful to you if you ever forget and need a quick reminder. So control U, very helpful. By the way, it's actually a shortcut for the help command. So if you know the keyword you want to look up but don't see it in the code, then just come to the command line here, type help, then space, then type the keyword, and press enter. There you go. Another lesser known shortcut in the code editor is being able to autocomplete blocks of code. All major blocks of code end with the word end. We have the start of a block, which is a function, and following this line, we'll find the end, where it says end. Also, inside of this function are smaller blocks of code, like this if then has an end, and this for do also has an end. We will write blocks of code like these a lot, and it gets annoying to press enter a couple times, type end, and then come back inside the block to write more code. But we have a shortcut to do all of that really fast. So after typing a keyword that would start a block of code, then we can hold shift and then press enter, and Pico8 will automatically write the end for us. Not just that, but notice that it made a new line in between, and even added a tab indent inside and set the cursor to be already in the code block where we want to write. Perfect, such a nice feature of the code editor. All right, now down at the limitations display, we have a few extra shortcuts here with the mouse. You already know that you can left click to display the three different limitations. When your code passes one of the limits, the bar will start flashing. You can right click on the limitations to turn warning flash off. We also have a couple extra display options we can switch to. If you go to the character limit and hold control while you left click one time, then the limit display changes to show the max limit of one tweet, and it will count the code in a way that Twitter or X or other social media will count it. Now, why do we have this? Well, because there is a sub community within Pico8 where the challenge is to see how much they can squeeze into a single tweet. We call them tweet carts. So if you ever delve into that world, this limitation count will come in handy. Another display we can change is the compression capacity. Control click on this limit, and instead of percentage, it will display a real-time count in number of bytes. Useful for when you are shaving off every little bit of your code to fit within this limitation. Lastly, we have a few different font options. Control P will turn on puny font. This is a way you can write in what appears as lowercase letters, but since the default font is already lowercase, these are actually uppercase letters. So the full Pico8 font is sort of swapped around, with lowercase letters appearing as large uppercase, and true uppercase letters appear as lowercase. But with puny font turned on, it types in the way that we're used to, where just typing letters appears as lowercase, and I have to hold shift and then type a letter to make it appear as uppercase. This is important to know because you might try to copy paste some code someone shared with you, and if there are any uppercase letters in the code, they will be converted to lowercase, which is the default font, when you paste it into Pico8. So if you want to paste it exactly as it's written, then you have to turn on puny font first with control P. The next two fonts are Japanese. You can type in hiragana with control J or katakana with control K. Since Zep lives in Japan, I think it's pretty cool to include this for our Japanese Pico8 enthusiasts over there, and it gives us a lot more characters to use. All right, that's all of them. But I should warn you about some differences we've found where some don't work as expected. For Mac users, you'll have to test it out to see which shortcuts do use the control key or which use the command key instead. 
For Education Edition users, your browser could be using one of these shortcuts already and will react to the key press before Pico 8 does. For example, browsers don't seem to listen to the Alt key being pressed, so trying to move around with Alt and arrow keys just moves the cursor around as if you're not pressing Alt. Also be careful of Control w though this doesn't seem to be a problem in Safari. But most other browsers, this is the shortcut to close the current browser tab. And Control tab is also already a shortcut in most browsers, including Safari. Control tab will switch browser tabs instead of switching your Pico 8 code tabs. If you find any more differences that we should be aware of, let us know in the comments to help warn others. Thanks! I love this community. You are all awesome and super helpful to us and to each other. And we wouldn't be able to dedicate our time to these lessons if it weren't for these generous supporters within the community who are helping to make this content be free for everyone else. So if you can, consider joining up. You can find the link in the description. Subscribe to the channel and visit our website for more content. NerdyTeachers.com